What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. In today's video, we're gonna check out a node that allows us to quickly create brick textures in Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about the brick texture node. Um, it's a node for Blender built to create procedural bricks inside of your models. So later on, we may talk about adding some different modifiers and things to make it more realistic. But this week, let's focus on what the node actually does. So first thing we wanna do is we've got a cube inside of Blender. Let's add a material and let's go ahead and let's create a brick texture. So we're just gonna do a shift A and we're gonna add a brick texture node right here. Then I'm just gonna take the color and I'm gonna drag it into the base color of my principal BSDF. What that's gonna do is that's going to give me a brick texture that's applied to the surface of my cube right here. So notice how at the moment, this is applying straight down on my object right here. We can fix that in a second. But first, let's focus on what this is doing. So if we look at our brick texture node right here, notice how we have options in here for different things that we can adjust that affect the way these boxes lay on this face. So for example, if I adjust the offset, what that's gonna do is that's going to take these bricks and it's going to align them like this. So if you want them to be just like straight like this, then um, you'd set your offset to zero. If you want them to be offsetting, you can set the amount of offset in here by adjusting the offset value. 0.5 is gonna make these so they are exactly halfway um, on each row. So they're kind of like moving and alternating halfway both ways. So frequency is going to allow you to set how often this offset occurs. So if I set my frequency to three, right, then you're going to get two rows that are offset, one row that isn't. So it's gonna give you two rows that are offset and one row that isn't. Um, so you can use this to adjust how often that occurs. So notice how you start getting interesting results the more that you do that. Um, usually for a standard brick material though, you're gonna set your frequency to two. So your squash is gonna set how wide the bricks are that are being offset. So notice how every other row, this is affecting um, the thickness of the brick. So let's say we were to turn this up, right? Let's say we were to set our squash to like 1.4, but then we were to turn our frequency up or down. Notice how you're gonna get more or less of those squashed bricks in here. And then you can also adjust the frequency value right here. So I'm gonna put this back to one so that we have this kind of uniform brick texture. So next we've got the vector node. And what we can do with the vector node is we can plug our UV uh, uh, texture coordinate node in here. All right, so for our texture coordinate node, we're gonna take our UV and we're gonna plug it into our vector right here. That's going to take the UV map of the object and it's going to apply it to this brick texture. So notice how now your brick texture is actually gonna follow along on this object. One thing I do recommend is make sure that you've UV unwrapped this. So we can just go into, so we're just gonna tab in edit mode. And for this one, we're just going to do UV cube projection right here. So notice when you do that, that's gonna UV unwrap this object. Then those UVs will be used to place this brick texture on your model. So next, you've got options on here for your color. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to set your different brick colors. So in this case, right, if I was to take like a orangish or brownish material like this, and you can kind of adjust it to get what you'd like, but then you can take the second one and make it more of a reddish material like this. Notice how you can uh, quickly create kind of a brick look in here. The mortar is gonna adjust the color of your mortar. So in this case, right, if I drag this as more of a white um, as opposed to a dark, then you're gonna get a different effect. Um, the white is probably a little bit more realistic Though um, the general result that comes out of this one without any kind of noise is kind of cartoonish anyway. But you can also use the scale modifier to adjust how large the bricks are going to be on your object like this. So you can also adjust the mortar size. So the mortar size is going to set how thick the mortar is between your bricks. So usually I end up typing in a value in here because if you just use the arrows, the increments are too big, but you can use this in order to set how thick your mortar is going to be. So then your mortar smoothness is going to do exactly what it sounds like. It's gonna set how smooth your mortar is um, on your object right here. So if I turn my smoothness up, notice how I don't have very pronounced edges around here. If I turn my smoothness down, then those are gonna be very sharp edges. So your bias value is going to affect the color variation between colors 
um, one and two. So if you were to put a value in here of zero, right, then um, it's right down the middle. Um, if you were to type in a value of negative one, notice how all of your bricks are going to be the color of color one. If you set it to one, then all of your bricks are going to be the color of color two. So you can use this to um, affect how many bricks are going to be a certain color. So for example, if you want more of them to be this darker material, you would turn your bias up in that direction. If you wanted more of them to be the light material, you would turn your bias down. So you can use this in order to kind of customize the blending between the two colors that you have selected in here. So brick width is going to do exactly what it sounds like. Um, it's going to affect the width of the bricks right here. Um, you can also affect the height of the bricks right here. So if you wanted more of like a CMU block type situation, you met, might set your height a little bit higher. Um, if you wanted kind of a thin brick or something like that, you could use this to set your uh, you could use this to set your rows smaller as well. So there's kind of some interesting uh, there's kind of some interesting applications in there for creating like a subway tile or something like that as well. All right, and I don't want to go too far down this path in this video. Uh, we can talk about this in a separate video, but um, what you might do um, now that you have these all kind of created is you might add some different like noise textures in here to get rid of the uniformity. Let's say that we didn't want the color on the bricks to be quite as uniform. Well, what we can do is we can add like a noise texture modifier right here. So we're going to add a noise texture and we don't want to plug this into this node. What we want to do is we want to add a color ramp node right here. What that's going to do is that's going to allow us to plug the factor into the factor right here. And then it's going to allow us to plug the color into this first color. Well, what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to set our bricks so that they've got a little bit of a, a little bit of detail to them. Um, so what they're going to do is they're going to alternate between these different colors, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag these in a little bit, but I'm going to set these two colors to kind of that reddish color that we had in here before. So maybe something like this. And then for this other one, let's say we wanted this to kind of like alternate to more of like a darker red, something like this. So we'll drag this down a little bit. Really doesn't matter what the colors are. That's kind of your artistic license. But if we take our noise texture and scale it up, notice how what we're getting is we're getting noise in the colors of the bricks right here. So what that means is that means that brick material in here is no longer just uniform. Um, it's a lot more rough. Right, and we can do the same kind of thing with uh, like our mortar color. So let's say we're to take this whole thing, do a shift D and duplicate it. But this time we're gonna drag it into our mortar. And we wanna set our mortar so that we've got a little bit of variation in here between the first and the second. So I'm gonna set both of these to kind of like a lightish color. So I'll set this first one to like a white. We'll set this second one to like a gray something like this. But again, notice how now we're getting variations in the color. And for this one, we might want to adjust that scale a little bit in here, but notice how you can use this so that your colors are no longer 100% uniform in here. And so, like I said, I don't want to go too far down this path in this video. Um, I can do a video next week talking a little bit more about creating a realistic brick, but there's a lot of options in here once you start figuring out how this brick texture node works. So leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. Like I said, we can get into the more uh, procedural brick full-on materials in a future tutorial. But I will link to some other Blender node tutorials on this page as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.